Cameron's closet today. I have a really fantastic artist with me today. And he currently lives in Cape Town, South Africa. And I actually discovered him um, just through doing research, like I always do on Facebook. And I had just started noticing immediately um, some of his art was really captivating me because the colors were bold, and I'm a big color person. But there was a certain elegant ambiance in the energy of his um, his, his canvases, and they were really large format. And I've, I, that's something that has always attracted me in art. I love large um, canvases. And so the boldness and the large formats really got my attention as well as the colors. And the energy created is just is so eye-catching for me. And his work really just creates a very elegant mood and or energy, whatever you want to call it. And it's the large canvases just showcase um, his style of work so well. And he's also um, he has a really unique uh, technique that he uses with large brushes. And he was going to demonstrate them, but we we aren't going to be able to do that today. But his art, he does have some of his art with him, so I'm really excited about that. So without further delay, I want to introduce you to and welcome Jimmy Law. Jimmy, say hello, so I know you're still with me. Hi, Tamara. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm great. I'm so glad to have you here. It seems like I've been trying yeah. to get you on here for a while. But yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, welcome. So I, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the questions and, and get sure. going here. So while we've got a great connection, so when you, I want to know a little bit, um, Jimmy, about when you were growing up and, you know, did you experiment with art at all or show a fascination of art when you were really, really young at all? Yeah, you know, as a, uh, as a kid, I mean, all kids, you know, draw with crayons and play with clay and all sorts of stuff. But uh, I continued to, to draw, uh, especially pencil drawings, uh, for most of my childhood, you know. Never really painting. Uh, we, were, we, were, we were fairly, fairly poor when we grew up, so, uh, you know, there wasn't money for paint and that, but I continued to draw, uh, illustrate always. Uh, so yeah, I think I've always had a, had a love for it um, as a kid growing up, all, all the way into high school. I always used to draw, uh, yeah, pencil drawings a lot. Yeah. So you might Did you? Sorry, sorry. Were there yeah. were there artists in your family? Like were any any art history in your family? Like your parents or aunts and uncles or yeah, my grand, uh, my grandma, my one grandma um, used to paint. Uh, I remember she used to do flowers and stuff. She liked to do well, all well paintings of flowers. Um, and I think also my dad uh, has a bit of art in him because he used to also illustrate a bit, but he never really e explored that aspect of of his life, you know. But my grandma was definitely artistic, and uh, I think I, I got most of of the talent that I do have. I, I actually inherited it from my grandma. I think so. Yeah. Uh huh. Did your parents or people in your family notice that you had a talent? Did they? Yeah, certainly. Um, I was. Uh, I did have a bit of art uh, in high school for the first year. Uh, we call it standard six. Uh, I used to go to a school in Stellenbosch and uh, had uh, art as a subject. But uh, I've always also been a little bit um, uh, of a problem kid, I think, <laughs> in some sense. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't really like the curriculum so much. So I kind of lost interest in the projects that they gave us and uh, I wasn't really interested in. I wasn't really paying attention, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, that's, that was pretty much as a kid. That was the only exposure to a formal art education, if, if you can call it that. 
Right. Did you have a fascination with um, uh, comic books back then? Because I know we're going to talk about yeah. that a little later, but yeah, you did. Yeah, I think I, I think I think most of the kids, you know, boys especially growing up, maybe not so much today because uh, it's a different era. And kids are raised differently. They back then we didn't have the internet. You know, uh, we 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 had VHS video cassettes. Uh, the big ass ones, and uh, now it's everything you know, streamed off the internet. But back then, we were exposed to comic books. So I think I think the comic book market back then was a lot more successful and a lot more mainstream than it is today. I think it has kind of become an underground or a subculture now more than ever before. But when I was a kid, I definitely I loved comic books. You know. Um, I think it's because uh, of the illustration and the colors and everything appealed to me. Uh, and I think that's why I also, you know, and, and not just that, but it's not just the art, but it's also telling a story. You know? So there's a lot of facets about comic books that um, that is what really appealed to me. Yeah. Yeah. I liked them growing up, I remember. So. Yeah. Uh, I still, I still, nowadays, I mean, if, if, there's, a, if there's a movie out, a new Batman movie or a Superman movie or Fantastic Four or whatever, I'm still intrigued and I still want to watch it. You know, so I haven't I haven't lost that fascination with, with, with that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, well, your work is very colorful, and and so and I'm going to ask you about that a little bit. But after you were discharged from the National Service, I know you moved to Cape Town. And yeah. you, you said you got your first job at a printing company, and it your bio said that you tried some different endeavors, and and it mentioned clothing design and and yeah. to surfboards. How did you choose clothing design at that time? You know, I was it was it was really actually kind of in a in a, in a crappy stage of my life where I didn't really know I didn't have a direction. I didn't really know what I want to do with my life, and uh, I, I sat down with my parents and I said, "Listen, I want to do something where I can still use my artistic skills, but make something that um, make a product that can hopefully make me money, you know. So, um, in part, you know, not just create art and try to sell art, but actually making a product. Not that I say that art's not a product, but I'm sort of saying something a bit more commercial." Um, so I, I tried my hand at, at making surfboards. Uh, it went okay. I did it for five years, but it, it turned out to be a labor of love. It never really made money. Uh, it was a, it was a nice time of my life though. It was very relaxed, very mellow. Uh, on the days when the surf was good, there was hardly any work going on, and then on the days when it's crappy, you work your ass off. So uh, you had that freedom, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, you start get, getting closer to your 30s and you realize that, listen, this thing is not making me money, no matter how hard I try. So you, you kind of face with the decision and, and uh, you move on, you know, you try something else. Uh, and then after that, I, you know, I've always been fascinated with uh, clothing design uh, and especially the printing side, you know, printing on clothing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Pretty that's that's what I'm talking about. Not not really design, but more, you know, transferring your art onto onto clothing. Um, but that also is a tough industry, you know. I, even to this day, I, I, I every once in a while I do a bit of illustration or so, and um, hopefully I, I get uh, to put some of my designs on some T-shirts and stuff, more just for fun than really. You know, to make money out of it, it's it's just another creative outlet for me. You know, yeah. Oh yeah, I can see your art on clothing design, and but that that's cool because I when I saw that I thought maybe you were actually drawing, you know, actually designing garments. You know, yeah, but you're no, you were in the printing no. side of it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And even now, even today, still, you know. Uh, my mate that knows me, you know, they, you know I, I illustrate every once in a while and 
I still want to, still want to do some things with t-shirts and stuff. You know, stuff that I want to wear. You know, and I, I'm pretty sure that there's some folks out there that's got, got the same taste as me. So if we can sell a few, then you know, that's, that's that'll be cool. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, um, you had like three years of graphic design, and uh, I think it was before you went in the national service. Is yeah. there? Do you use that? What did you take away from that course? And does it influence your art at all today? Yeah, you know, yes and no. Um, to be honest, when I look back, I, I kind of realized that I enrolled for the wrong course. And um, at the time, we didn't know. I mean, my, my dad, that basically enrolled me for this course, I think he he also wasn't really sure about what I should be doing, but I should be doing something artistic. Um, but I, I definitely learned some things. Um, even today, I'm still using Coral Draw and Photoshop to edit photographs, um, you know, to do some designs, but not extensively. It's uh, just the basics. Um, but I think you can, if, if you look at my art, even at my paintings today, they're still quite a strong design element in it. Um, and that's something that I, I'm kind of struggling to shake because I want to be a completely loose, uh, a fine art painter. Um, but uh, the design element is still embedded in my work. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really it's stuck with me for all these years. And even now, uh, it's still there. So yeah, I've, I've, it's, it's definitely had uh, quite a big influence in, in, in me as a person, but also my work all my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it gives you a little bit of an edge. I think it gives your style, um, the style that you're doing is just, to me, yeah, it's, it's um, making you stand out. I think, I think what it does, what it does is because those design elements, you know, something like um, hard edges, you know, very hard edges in your work, um, uh, contrast, uh, the strong use of color and that sort of thing, uh, it, it really makes it makes the work really strong. Uh, I sometimes, although I have to say, sometimes I look at other artists' work and I kind of sometimes long for that softness. Uh, and then blending of colors, this nice soft blending of colors, which you don't really find in my work, you know. My work is uh, overall very, very strong. But at the same time, I enjoy what I do. Uh, it's, uh, it still challenges me. Uh, uh -huh. I'm still focused on, on progressing, um, which is really important for me. It's, it's, it's what drives me. Um, but yeah, uh, at the moment, I'm just I'm not enjoying it. Working my butt off, <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, I love it. That's good. Well, when you you were a comic book illustrator, and I wanted to point that out for the viewers because for a while, when one of the first paintings that I saw, um, that when I noticed that you had been a comic book illustrator, this to me, this it that really shines through. I think, and it's because of these colors. And um, yeah, yeah. this, I mean, I, these are the colors that we see back when they really comic books were the thing. And yeah. so when you were doing the comic books, the illustrating, did, do you miss that at all? Do you, and, and I, obviously my question was going to be, do you think that influence comes into your work today? And I so feel like it. I feel like it yeah. does in this one especially. Yeah, you can. You can. That that one is actually one of. The, I think that's that's probably only one of two pieces that I've used so much yellow in. And yellow is a yellow is a difficult color, you know, to use on you know, so much yellow. It, uh, it's not a color for everybody, so it's a little risky to do a painting with so much yellow, as it is with a color like navy blue. Right. Or purple. Right. Or, or a really bright green. You know, it's uh, it's not a color for everybody. It's uh, and yeah, I, I get what you're saying. It's definitely there's still because yellow and red, the basic, the basic your, your process colors, 
are extensively used in comic books. Right? Yeah. So I get why you're saying that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what it reminded me. I can't think of what comic book character, but it really mm -hmm. stood out to me. And so, um, you know, but I know you were, you were mostly self-taught um, other than mm -hmm. the graphic design course, but it did, were there, it sounds like the only real lessons you had was in high school maybe that year? Did you ever have any other formal art lessons or? When I, when I enrolled for graphic design, in my first year I had, a sub, I had painting as a subject, but I totally hated it. I, I rebelled against it. Uh, I used to, I was always late with projects. Um, because I couldn't understand why do I have to do a fine art subject. Painting is a fine art subject, and, and also sculpting. You know, it's got nothing to do with graphic design. Right. But so I, I really I, I had no interest in even doing those projects. I remember, you know, doing um, these projects in my dorm of landscapes with no reference. I would just put in trees and bushes and rocks and stuff just to get something done and put it up and get a mark you know, and hopefully pass. So um, I was really not interested in painting, but this is what I do now for a living. You know, and I love it. <laughs> no. um, I can't explain it. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little weird, but I love it, yeah. Well, uh, it's so odd. So if, I did, if, if, if that answers your question, I, that's probably that year of, of of fine art painting in my first year of graphic design was the only real formal education that I, that I got as a painter. Um, and you didn't like it? I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, look at, looking back, now I wish I wish I understood a little bit more about myself because you, you know, life is a journey and you, you discover things about yourself sometime at the, at the wrong time. And I wish I discovered it back then, you know, when I was 24 years old, you know, that I, I actually had a knack for painting and I should just go with it, regardless of the fact that I'm, you know, I'm here to do graphic design. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a little strange, but uh, I guess uh, it's not just how life works sometimes, right? Eh? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think there are any mistakes. I think things happen for a reason, or that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. But you know, you you obviously weren't ready for it then, and I think that's so, I think that's the, that's the case. So, um, and you definitely are now. So, I, I know yeah. in two in two thousand and eight, you I believe marked the time where you decided to focus entirely on your painting. And I wanted you to talk a little bit about that time because I know it, you said it was tough trying mm -hmm. to make a living and you were actually doing a more real, realistic style and I wanted to show this to the viewers. Um, this is sort of more what you were doing then. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And what, what medium were you using at that time doing? Because you were doing a lot of these Hollywood characters. That's right. When I, uh, you know, even even before that, I, I dabbled in painting because uh, I, I basically, I left my day job because I hated this company that I was working for. Um, they just didn't love the employees, didn't respect the employees. I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, know what that's like. Uh, really unhappy in my day job and um, decided to, to, to look at, can I, can I, Explore, or explore my my life as a painter. Can I make a career out of it? Can I make money out of it? Uh, and uh, you know, with the design and illustration background, I used to work uh, in a very photorealistic style. Small little brushes, very accurate, you know, um, very controlled, contrived. Um, and I got pretty good at it. Uh, but, you know, I started showing my work to galleries and stuff and the one big gallery said, uh, I can remember the comment was, uh, uh, you know, technically my work is, is great, it's 
beautiful, it's good. Uh, I can see that I can paint, but at the same time, it is it has no energy. You know, they want to they want to see some energy. Um, so I said to them, well, I had one piece there. I actually did a piece of Clint Eastwood just for fun because I personally love love Clint Eastwood. I think he's got a great face. I think he's got like, really strong features, and that is something that appeals to me. And I love him as an actor, but so I painted him, and among all these paintings that I went to show this gallery, they pointed that one out because I did a little bit something different in that one. I used slightly bigger brushes, and there was a bit of paint dripping and stuff. But I wasn't. I was only. I was only experimenting with that piece, you know. But they said to me that piece has more energy and more life in it than all the other works that looks like they were photographs. And that is what they love. And they they basically ask me, and they basically ask me to, you know, go and do a few more of those, get comfortable with this style, bring us back some more, and then we can talk about representation and you know putting some work up for you in the show. And um, yeah, so that's that is basically where I started realizing that listen, if I can if I can produce work that has got energy in them, you know, that is what what these oaks like. And uh, at least this will get me a foot in the door, and I can uh, I'll have a gallery that represents me. And uh, ever since, you know, I, I have never looked back. So uh, I'm still I'm still experimenting. I'm still um, learning, uh, still trying new things to progress and, and uh, get better at what I do in the style that I'm working. But uh, that's basically how the whole transition happened. Uh, yeah. Well, you changed mediums too, right? Totally. Yeah. During yeah, the initially I, yeah, initially I worked uh, with acrylic paint because I'm impatient. Uh, I can't wait for paint to dry. I want to paint now and I want to finish it. But um, at the same time, acrylics has, the, has its limitations, you know. Uh, and another a friend of mine was was painting uh, in oils, just just you know just as a hobby, and uh, I used to visit him frequently because you know, I, I wanted to learn things from him, but I wasn't a little bit uh, scared of oils. I didn't know the medium. It looked really messy, um, and he gave me a few tubes of paint, and I tried them out, and I soon realised, but geez, these things are magic, you know, uh, and I just fell in love with them. And ever since, uh, I, you know, now I only use oils. I mean, I, I start my paintings in acrylics. I would do underpainting with acrylic paint because it dries really quick. It means the process can get going. Uh, basically saves me a whole day. Uh, and then everything on top is, is done with oils. Wow. So you use both. That's pretty cool, I think. I didn't. Now, when you during this time when you made that decision to change your style after that uh, last gallery like the energy of Clint Eastwood, what what was the influence that led you to use such large formats and and and, and move into the large brush? Uh, you know, I started. I think when you when you're a young artist. Um, because you're a little, I was a little scared. Uh, well, first it's a little scared because I mean to to face a, a two meter canvas is a, is a daunting thing. It's it's intimidating, you know. Um, starting on small canvases uh, when you're still not all that confident with your style, um, it's safer. You know, you make a mistake. It's it's a two hundred rand canvas, it's not a thousand rand canvas. You know that if you're like oh. How I screwed up a thousand man canvas. I can't. How can I fix it? Can I paint over it? Is it is it is it such a mess that I've got to chuck this canvas away? I just wasted a grand. You know, as a young artist, you don't have money, um, and at the same time, you're you're not that confident uh, in your work yet. So you start out smaller, but as your confidence grows, as as you become more skilled at your craft. Um, you know, you take on larger, larger canvases, which is uh, also a challenge. Um, and uh, you know, I, I eventually just fell in love with large canvases because the work has such a presence. 
it, it makes such a, a strong statement when you're, when you're looking at a, at a piece that's two meters across or 1.5 or two meters across, sometimes even bigger. It just makes a huge, huge visual statement. And uh, that's, that's really what I love. Uh, it, is, uh, it is really tricky to maintain a high level of intensity on large canvases because everything becomes bigger. Um, but uh, I think uh, over the years, as my, as my technique developed, uh, I've found a way to maintain uh, quite a lot of intensity, even though the canvases are big, which I think is, is, is quite special. Uh, but it's still, it's, it's still very challenging. Uh, but uh, I like that. I like, I like being challenged. Um, uh, that's, yeah. So, uh, I'll, yeah, I like, I like the big canvases. When you say intensity, like in, in the color as well as the detail, or just? That's exactly it. Um, intensity, um, because uh, if, if you have to think about it, if you're looking at a, a small picture on a, on a computer monitor, um, it's got a certain amount of pixels, right? Right. Now, if you, blow, if you blow that up to two meters across, those pixels become really big. And it's almost like that detail becomes lost because everything is blown up. So to try and maintain that same intensity that you had in a small picture but on a large format, uh -huh. it's a tricky thing. And I think, I think it's got a lot to do with the way that you approach your technique. What you use, what tools you use, um, how you apply your paint, uh, the amount of colors that you use. Um, and uh, if, if you look at my canvases up close, it is actually there's a lot of scratches, there's a lot of messiness, uh, and I think that that contributes to maintaining the, uh, the intensity uh, instead of using strokes that are just simplified. Uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of intricate, complex uh, little scratches and, 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 and marks and, and colors and textures that, that help to maintain that intensity in the work. And that's how you moved into the large brush, is that? Yeah, I, I actually at the moment, I'm, I'm not really using large brushes all that much anymore. Oh, I still you're not? Do, I, I still do on an occasion. These are these are some of the brushes that I use, I mean, you know, pretty that's big. That's pretty large. <laughs> yeah, but even so, I don't, I don't use these much anymore because most of my work has now become known as, as, as I use palette knives. These guys, but this is this is really a scraping tool, but I use it in the same way that a, a palette knife painter would use a palette knife. But I also cut pieces of plastic because the, I like I like uh, the flexibility of, of the plastic. So I use it. I use basically scraping tools. Sometimes little pieces of blocks of wood with with a nice hard edge uh, because it doesn't give at all. It's it's a very unforgiving tool, but it has a different characteristic. It's a, a, you know, when you when you apply paint, then it's something that, that flexes. Um, so yeah, a variety of tools, but I mean, even large brushes I still use. And then if you if you if you do look at my paintings, you can see in areas of the features, uh, especially the eyes, there are still small brushwork, uh, just for those really really small little details that, that you just can't achieve with, with tools like that. You know, with, with tools like this, you know. Achieving detail is virtually impossible. It's just the tool just doesn't allow it. So I still use small brushes, but probably, I would say about ninety to ninety-five percent of, of the actual work is done with large tools. Wow. Well, tell me what the inspiration was behind um, where you started with the dripping effect. Oh, I just love it. Um, I use a lot of turpentine. Um, you know, it's also what I like about throwing paint on on a canvas and just splashing it on is you don't you don't have a lot of control over what happens as soon as the paint hits the canvas. You know the way it runs. Um, it, it's a little it's, it's a little fun element that and it's, it, it adds a different look to the whole picture um, because there's no brush marks, there's no bristle marks. There's no edge of a scraping tool. It's just a different medium, um, and it's got a washy, runny 
messy effect. And uh, I think all together, with with small brushes, large brushes, paint dripping and running and scraping tools, you've got all these different textures that work in harmony together to form a completed picture. And yeah, it's I just love it. Paint running, why not? <laughs> No, I do. I love it. I really do. Um, I just want, I wondered how you made, because I was curious how you made this decision moving back and forth between acrylic and oil, but it sounded like you you start out with the acrylic and then... Yeah, and yeah then it's, just, it's basically the, the first three layers that I put down on a canvas is done with acrylics. Uh, it's, what, it's what we call, I think it's basically called the underpainting. It's, it's basically the foundation of everything that follows on top of it. But um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't contribute a whole lot to, to the overall look of the painting. It's mostly all the layers that follow after that that is, is the interesting bit of, of creating you know, the art piece. So the first one or two layers of acrylics. It's just, uh, it's basically just the background now. Right. Well, I wanted that you uh, to ask you a little bit about, you know, when you made this change or, you know, I know because before you were doing the Hollywood actors and now you do a lot of portrait work. Are these, are these portraits, like these people behind you, are these uh, necessarily all commission works of, or are these some, are these people that you just um, you use models or photographs or how how do you where do these pe people come from are they models or they because I, I don't think they're all commissioned are they no no no, no. I, I do get more and more commissions these days you know private commissions but uh, you know I, I paint faces that I really love uh, I'm fortunate that I have some friends that sometimes model for me. Uh, you know, I sometimes go up to strangers in public, and it, it's always it's always tricky because I think with the beard and all, I think especially girls, I think, yeah, <laughs> you know, this guy's a bit of a weirdo. <laughs> um, and so you, you really got to quickly explain that, hey, listen, I'm an artist, and here's my work, and show my phone or whatever. But it's always tricky to, to try and approach new models. I, I struggle with that. So I'm, I'm actually, uh, I've, I've, my fiance Candace is, is uh, taking care of that aspect of you know sourcing models for me more and more because uh, it's a lot easier for her to approach girls than it is me. Um, but um, yeah, sometimes it's just random people, sometimes friends, uh, sometimes images that I find online that is uh, safe to, to use. So it's a whole mixture, you know. Um, yeah, I like to paint different faces. Uh, you know, Are some you? artists, yeah, some artists have one or two models, uh, and they would basically produce a whole body of work for an entire year or so, just painting the same faces over and over. Um, that is something that I don't know if I can do. I think I would get really easily bored painting the same faces over and over. Right. I need that variety, yeah. Yeah. Well, would you, are you photographing them and then painting from the yes. photographs? Or is that I, what you I work, I work from photographs, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell, ask you, when you are looking for a model, like before um, your fiancé started doing it, what are you... What are you looking for when you choose a model to put on this big canvas? Is there a... Do you usually have yeah. the idea in mind first, or you a particular look, or do you just what what capt what captures your attention? What makes you want to paint a particular person? You know, it's um, I'll be honest with you. The, the prettiest people, I think, I think the the Barbie doll girls don't really appeal to me. Right. Um, I find I find yeah, I like people with interesting features. You know, sometimes a slightly bigger nose or really big luscious lips or really big eyes. Um, that, that's the kind of thing that really appeals to me. Um, so yeah, when I when I see somebody that with features that are really interesting and not just Barbie doll pretty, because that I kind of find boring. Right. Uh, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I see people like that, it's those are the people that I really want to find. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's true. I think that's why well, I told you I was doing photography and I, I know a lot of photographers enjoy photographing the really, really young models. And I like the challenge of photographing a more mature person as well, you know, and mm. someone that's got a little more character, I guess. So, I said, uh, yeah, it's, um, but anyway, I just wondered how you went through that process. Now, when I look at your portraits, I see so much elegance. And yet there's still a bit of a moodiness, like you see mood here, but I, I don't, I don't see sadness really, but there is a, a moodiness, but it's not, I think because the colors are so vibrant and stunning um, and with the dissipating lines and all that, it, I think it gives it that elegance. I was curious as to what type of collectors does your work seem to attract? Is there, do you notice a common thread that of people that are attracted to your work or? It's a little, that's a little tricky to answer because, um, you know, there's a, whole, there's a whole variety of people that, that collect my work now. I, you know, young, younger couples, younger collectors. But I also get guys now, collectors that has you know, 100 pieces of art in their collection, some value, very valuable pieces, you know, both in South Africa and, and overseas, you know, from Europe. Um, so it's, it's kind of difficult for me to say there's only one kind of collector that, that buys my work now. Uh, it's very eclectic. Um, and as far as, uh, you know, the the mood of my work is concerned. I think if you look at it, there's never there's never one um, emotion in my work. Right. Uh, never just sadness or just happiness. I mean, um, I'm actually I, I I kind of refuse to to paint happy faces because that limits your work to one emotion only. And I think you know we are we are such diversity. Uh, you know people with so many diverse emotions that to just show one emotion makes it a little bit boring. So you'll see that basically all my paintings are poker faces, you know, and uh, I think uh, that makes the work a bit more ambiguous uh -huh. and kind of uh, people have different opinions about my work because I think different interpretations, which I think is really good. Um, yeah. It, it, it opens, opens that whole aspect of, of thinking about my work and also interpreting because personally I think in a lot of my work there's, there's a little bit of, especially the women, um, there's a sense of fragility, uh, there's, there's a sense of pain, um, maybe a little bit of hurt and that sort of thing, a little bit of sadness. Um, also, you know, especially over the last two years, I'm obscuring some of the features, especially the eyes and the mouths a little bit. Um, and in a sense, you almost, I think a lot of people look at it and they ask, you know, I guess, has, has this person been damaged? Has this person been hurt? Is this person going through, you know, a difficult phase in their lives? Or, you know, are, are they carrying, you know, hurt with them? Um, and uh, that, is, that is something that I like to uh, you know, explore. But I think uh, to a large extent, there's still a lot of ambiguity. So there's a lot of room for interpretation uh, in my work as it is. The one other thing that uh, I've also been hearing about my work is that people think it's quite an, an, an androgynous. It is, uh, it's not just feminine or not just masculine, but there's, there's enough elements of both in my work. and. Um, yeah, uh, I like that too. Uh, I think I think it makes uh, makes the work interesting. I do. I think, and you've answered my next question because I I yeah, wanted uh, to know I wanted to know what <clears throat> some of the responses were, and because I I think I, I get a different. I agree. I think you're going to get a lot of different responses. This is might be a good time for you to show some of those or talk about the ones behind you, Jimmy. Sure. If there's, if there's anything you want to share. Um. Not, well, actually, not really. I kind of, I kind of talked about the tools and everything that I use. Um. 
I don't know. What, what do you have in mind? <laughs> Well, you just, um, maybe your choice in models, and, and I know the, the one behind you is brand new, I believe. The one. One, the, the yeah, new I'm actually, I'm, I'm working on a rather big project uh, for the UK, and this is one of the pieces that's part of that. Um, I think I had this morning somebody interested in it, because I, I post the stuff on Facebook. Uh, and somebody inquired about uh, buying it, and uh, I have to tell them, sorry, but, uh, it's going to the UK as part of the project. So this is this is commissioned by a client. Oh. Uh, he's, he's, he's commissioned 16 pieces for this project. Um, and I think this is only the fourth one, so I still got 12 to do. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, and this is a lovely piece because I often actually, I like the hands because I often actually don't do hands. In, in my portraits. So, so this one is a little bit different in that regard, but I like it. Yeah. I do too. I noticed the hands because you don't yeah. you don't have hands in yours and that, that yeah, really very, very very seldom. The other two, that one and and uh, that lady is uh, part uh, we have an art fair in Cape Town in two weeks called uh, That Art Fair. And those two uh, along with another one that I still have to do will be going to the art fair. So that's uh, that's the destination of these pieces. Okay, all right. Because I know a lot of your works hang in offices too. You know, so not no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not that aware of it. I did I did get an email was it yesterday or the day before about somebody that saw a piece at at some at the head office of some bank or something, but I wasn't even aware of it. Wow. Uh, uh, sometimes I'm not aware of, of the clients that, that purchase pieces through the galleries. I don't even they buy directly from me. But uh, uh, yeah, so I think I think there's a, quite a few pieces in corporate collections, but most of them are in private collections. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, the the piece behind you with the hands when he he commissioned this, and you've got other pieces to paint. Did, did, did this person select the models, or did you, or? It's a, a, I, would, I would often source the models, and then I would uh, uh, email him photographs, and then he had to pick and approve which ones he thinks is suitable. <coughs> so it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's really it's my client's decision who, who he, he thinks I should use. But obviously, I would only submit works that I think uh, you know, is in my style and the kind of you know, paintings that I like to do. But uh, at the end of the day, the, the client chooses what, what they feel that they like most. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when when you're doing the shadows in there, are you, are, is there a particular tool that works better when you're getting into the darker areas? or Because I notice the texture changes throughout. Yeah, I mean, these dark areas under here is basically just most of that was done with just throwing paint on the canvas and it runs down. Whereas um, the hands and the face, that was most of that was applied with palette knife or those scraping tools. But the dark areas, most of that is actually just a uh, quick brushwork with paint dripping. Okay, so you're doing a lot. You're moving from different from tools to tools. Yeah, I've got a I've got a variety of tools, brushes, scraping tools. You know, sometimes even pieces of sponge. Uh, sponge soak up a lot of a lot of paint, and I push it onto a canvas. It just starts, you know, a lot of lot of the liquid and turfs and everything runs out of it. Something that you can't achieve with you know brushes really. Uh, so yeah, even sponges are sometimes used. Because the eyes, the eye work, I know I've seen, looked at some of them up really close on when I zoom in on them. And um, the eyes you do are just beautiful because they get very detailed. And yeah. I really love the work you do around the eyes. It's just incredible. Um, yeah, actually, the eyes are very important because when you communicate with someone, you know, you look them in the eyes. Um, it's, it's basically the, the one feature that reveals more about you as a person than anything else. So for me, uh, I think the eyes, first of all, getting them right and being them right is really important. 
But I also enhance them a little bit. Uh, when a person has blue eyes as a model, or in the photograph, I would sometimes, you know, it just uh, make them a little bit lighter than they would be in the photograph. And it, it becomes a little bit more interesting to look at. So there's a bit of uh, manipulation there, yeah. Right. Well, now, you may not experience this, but if you have, what are some of the things that you do it, when you face, like, I call it, like, painter's block, like, to get, what are things that you do to get inspired again? Well, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know, because <laughs> I, I haven't really faced that yet. Okay. <laughs> That's good. I'm still a young artist. I think uh, I think it might happen later in life. I hope not. But I, yeah, so I, I can't help you there, but because I haven't really faced that yet. I'm, oh, I'm highly motivated. I feel I feel very inspired. Um, I, last night I didn't even sleep, you know, at all. I think I, I did manage to get like two and a half hours sleep this morning, <laughs> but uh, I'll still be working tonight, you know. Uh, yeah, I actually sleep very little. I, I just, I just love painting. So, yeah. You, you sound like Janko, or I call him Janko, Hanko. Yeah, he, I know. Yeah. He doesn't know, sleep either. He doesn't sleep a lot. <laughs> we just, just call yeah. each other. <laughs> well, I wondered if you had any mentors that have influenced you over the years, and you stay in touch with at all, or. Um, not really. Other authors that I stay in touch with. But there are certainly artists that, that I look at and I go, wow, I really love your work. Um, Lim Zinn is one. Uh, Andrew Salgado, portrait, portrait painter, painter. He's Canadian, but uh, he's from the UK. There's quite a few. Uh, there's another artist, a South African artist, who's doing very well for himself now, called Ryan Hewitt. Uh, I really like his work. Um, so there's definitely, there's definitely uh, you know, a few artists that I work that I really like and it really inspires me, you know. Um, but it's not like I really stay in touch with them or, you know, they're not, they're not really my mates. It's just artists that, I, that, that really inspires me, you know. Yeah. And are, are you inspired, are there any that from, you know, many years ago that, you know, that wouldn't, that had inspired you, um, you know, throughout the years that aren't even alive today, just any of the greats, or, or are you more focused into who, what you can see now, people that are, you interact yeah. with on social media? Yeah, it's funny, I, uh, you know, I also had a history of art in, uh, when I started graphic design, but I hate, I hate history too, I think it's very boring, and I can't really, I can't really think Back and say, you know, you know, those old masters. This is one that really inspires me today. Uh, I certainly can appreciate the work that, I, that they've done in their time. Like Van Gogh, for instance. I think uh, the work that he did uh, in his lifetime was uh, brilliant. And yeah. at the same time, because I, th I think a lot of people thought he was mad at the time because nobody painted like him. I think yeah. a lot of people didn't respect his work because it was so different. But uh, I can really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, uh, there are, I think there are, there are certainly artists like that, that that was doing something really different. Or oh, like Salvador Dali. Um, his work, you know, as a surrealist was very different. Um, it doesn't really inspire me, but it's it, that kind of thing I really can appreciate. Right. Well, I've got just a couple more questions I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, from an artist's standpoint, how do you feel about social media? Has it helped you get your work out there? Do you, you know, or? Yeah, certainly. Uh, sure. I think, I think uh, if you were an artist, I don't know, what, 15, 20, 20 years ago, or was it longer? I don't know. If, before the internet and all that. Because I'll be honest, it, could have, it should have been very difficult, but uh, social media has made it a lot easier you know, to do marketing, to connect with people. Uh, a lot of my commissions today uh, is off the internet. 
people wow. that see my work, uh, people that share my work on Facebook or tag me on Instagram. Um, you know, I just uh, the network of people that get to see your work just becomes so much bigger and, and so much quicker. So um, at the same time, there's a whole lot of artists out there who has their work out there. So they're competing with a, a huge pool of artists, but at the, you know, technology certainly helps marketing your work and, and getting it out there certainly are oh, absolutely well where where do you see yourself moving towards with your art and your style because I, I noticed uh, you I believe on your in your statement on your website it mentioned that you were wanting to experiment more with nude portraits and yeah it's not um, you know I've always I've always been intrigued by the human form um, and, um, you know, painting people's faces is one thing, but painting their bodies is, it's, it's a different, uh, it has different challenges, you know. Um, so that, uh, you know, I, I think maybe it's used about comic books, and comic books are very, uh, very figure, uh, figuratively driven. I mean, all these people who look like super athletes and stuff like that, and <laughs> Drawing the human form and illustrating it is, is challenging, you know. Uh, and certainly, it also is painting. Uh, at the moment, I'm still really enjoying doing portraits. I still do the, the odd uh, figurative piece uh, now and then, you know, some nudes now and then. Um, but I think, for the most part, uh, as far as the future is concerned and where I want to go with my art, is um, doing what I do now. But just get better and better at it. Uh, progressing, experimenting a little bit more. It's, it's becoming a little bit more difficult to experiment because experimentation takes time. Uh, you, you need a bit of free time to try new stuff. Uh, you don't really want to try new stuff on somebody's commission um, because your client is expecting a certain look and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really busy at the moment, but. Um, Focus on getting better and better uh, has always been there, um, and we'll have to see. Uh, I, I kind of like the idea of obscuring more and more, more of the features of objects. Uh, I like it. Raise it. I think it raises more questions about my subject matter than it does when it's, everything is just pretty and. You know, um, so I think in, in that way my work becomes a little bit more uh, thought-provoking and it adds more value to the work in that, in that sense. Right. Um, but ultimately, becoming better at, at what I do as far as my technique is concerned, as far as how you approach your painting, uh, that, is, that is what I'm focusing on. Right. Now I know you've done a lot of exhibits. Do you do you ha have any plans to do something in the United States, or is that something you would even like to do? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know what, funny enough, for the last five years, I've had numerous exhibits, uh, some solo exhibits, some group exhibits. Um, this is the first year, 2016, that I actually have no exhibit lined up. Wow. Um, and you know what? Uh, it's okay because uh, I have so much work to do as it is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really need the extra pressure of, of being preparing for an exhibit. Yeah. Um, I still have some auctions coming up later in the year, and there's still two art fairs. Uh, and I now have an agent in the UK who's looking for work. Uh, first works are going there soon. Um, so that whole market is opening up, and uh, I'm also talking to an agent from Denmark now. So uh, you know what, this, this might turn out to be a very interesting year, and a year that opens a, a, a lot of new doors, you know. So uh, I'm a little hesitant to sign up and say, yeah, let me do a solo show and prepare three months for it, because all these other opportunities are, are coming to the fore. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just rolling with the things as it is, trying to get my work done and see what happens with uh, these other opportunities. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's great. I knew you'd done a lot of exhibits. So, um, 
but I'm sure it's nice to have the break. Before we end this, Jimmy, what is there anything, because there's so many amazing young artists out there, and not just young, but I guess I should say um, they're newly starting out uh, at, at any age. What, what advice would you give to someone who's maybe going through that frustrated time period where they feel like they're not getting anywhere? Sure. Um, I still regard myself as a young artist, but I, I've certainly I don't really deal with all that frustration so much anymore. So I can I can understand that I've been there. Um, I think the most important thing is to always try and do your best work, even if it takes a little bit longer. Focus on doing your best work. Always focus on learning. You know, learning from other people trying new things and experimenting and always do your marketing. You know, I think there's a lot of artists that sitting with art in their studios and nobody really gets to see it. It's, it's, you can't create a career that way. You have to put it out there. You know, you, you know, we are fortunate that we have social media and we have the internet and, and all of that. We can email people our stuff. So and you got to do it. Um, I think that's, that's probably one area where a lot of very talented young artists are, are you know, failing is because they don't market their work. Um, I think a lot, a lot of young artists are scared to deal with rejection, um, which is definitely part of, of your career as an artist. I have dealt with a lot of rejection, even, even to this day. You know, I, I, would, I would mail work to some galleries now. Some will never even reply to me. So, you know, that is something that uh, is difficult to deal with, but you've got to keep on doing it. So basically, work hard, you know, keep on learning, and put your work out there. You know? that's, that's the best advice that I can do. Well, that's great advice, and, and certainly you're right. Social media and the Internet has been a game changer, and people have just got to take advantage of it, you know. I mean, I know yeah. it gets... Sometimes we wonder what we did with our time before the internet, <laughs> but you know, yeah. and, you know, if I get if I get frustrated with Facebook, I just get off of it for a little while or whatever for the night or something. But you know, yeah. and it, it's such a blessing too, you know. So it's um, but I hate to have to end this today, Jimmy, but I. Uh, I want to thank you again for being here and showing your work and and sharing your story. But uh, cause there's, so, there's so many people out there wanting to do what you're doing, and they just don't have the courage, or they think they've waited too late in life. And so you're a great example of, you know, you actually hated painting when you were really young and felt like you should have been doing it. And now you're doing well, and you it's later in life, and so you're very much an inspiration, and I think that's very important. Um, and so I'm glad you were glad you were willing to share that today. Yeah, no, look, I, uh, I, uh, there's a lot of other people that inspire me too, you know, uh, people that I look up to, people in business, not necessarily artists, but just people. People that do good for other people, and um, I think that's uh, that's really the meaning of life is, is to inspire other people, you know, and to be inspired. Um, that is, uh, it's important for us. And uh, if I can help other artists, you know, there are certainly a lot of other artists that inspires me. And uh, what goes around comes around, you know. Exactly. I want to share this too with everybody so they can, um, you can, you can, Jimmy has a, actually a great website and it's just jimmylaw.co.za. Is this showing up, Jimmy? Yeah, I can see it. Thank okay. You. <laughs> and um, so you can, and also I will have a replay of this interview on my website, which is tamrosecloset.com. And I'll have the links to Jimmy's website and his social media sites in there as well, um, along with the article. And um, so you'll be you'll have plenty of ways to get in touch with with Jimmy Law. 
and of course this replay will also be on YouTube as well and so I want to also thank the viewers again for their continued support and please share this interview um, with your social media sites and help me continue to celebrate this fabulous artist Jimmy Law because he really is great he's such an inspiration and I think it's important for us to celebrate these people who have the courage to um, you know hone in on their talent and go after their dream uh, so I'm, I'm very grateful to have him here today I want you to join me next week because I'm going to interview another artist completely different from Jimmy. She's actually from Greensboro, North Carolina, Andy Hennings, and she's really honed in and mastered her gift of painting wildlife and horses. And you know I'm a horse lover, uh, anyone that's followed me. So uh, she will be with me. Um, her work is stunning. And so um, join me next week again for another great artist. Thanks again for uh, my viewers for your uh, you know support and and wishing you continued success and and you rock on as well thanks for watching thank you Tamara.